The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. You know, Mikey, I'm surprised you did not make a comment about me having my Great American Collectibles t-shirt on, by the way, which is on every Wednesday night at 6.30 on every platform you can think of. You're not making a comment. I'll make a comment. Well, I have to. After the show. No, see. I can't say this (laughs) on the air. The difference between. Because I'll get hit by Facebook. And I get fined enough. The difference between you and I is that you come in, you you cruise in two minutes before we go on the air, right? Mm -hmm. You're here for an hour show. Right? Yes, yes. Because at a holiday, we're doing it a little early. Yep. But I have to do 14 shows after this. 14. No. no How many? That's an example. 14? Two. <laughs> two. Ah, two. I understand. That's good. How are you doing? Hey, nice to see you. Good you to look see good. you. You look rested. Hey. I don't know, Mikey. You're... Bill. First yes. of all, Bill Durazio from. Okay, introduce Bill and then we can chat. Uh, Bill is the godfather of the Encore Boston Harbor Casino. All you have to do is mention Bill's name anywhere. I don't care if it's reception, valet, mention his name, you're going to get first class treatment. Bill, you've got quite a, reputa- that, but... quite a reputation. Quite a reputation. You get a piece of the action? <laughs> Not really. No. no. <laughs> don't start that because there's some people. Oh. Bill had a little bit of luck last year, at the beginning of last year, right? Yeah, yeah. And some people were saying, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. And that's how people think. You have a little bit of luck. Everybody's trying to give you the Malucky. They thought it was fixed that they pulled his name well, hold on, for a ten thousand dollar prize. Hold on. Now I'm going to ask you this. Sure. You All right. You're you're a casino guy. Yeah. Okay. I play the slots. Hypothetically, I play the slot machines. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are the chances of my winning um, analytically um, if I spend, uh, you know? 100% of my time for one week there, and I win 85% of the time. What, what are the numbers? It's, it's, that's pretty odd. It's a pretty high. Um, you should win around 92% 91%. of the time. 91%. Yeah, because the casino has a hold of, what, 8.2, 8. somewhere yeah. there. So, so when a person puts a, a, a money into a slot machine, if, if they're 92% of the time, they'll win extended, correct? You know, and I think, Bill, you're right. Yeah, because I've and always Bill wondered explain, that. Let Bill explain it. So, so basically what happens is that there's, it's called a, a Theo, right, which is theoretical. The longer you play, the more chances are the casino is going to take your money, correct? The that's, longer you play. Right. So, that's, so, that's, so the numbers go down. Exactly. Oh. So that's how they comp you because they look at that and say, okay, geez, Tom's been playing for like five hours. So the average is, okay, he's going to lose 8.2% of his money over that time time period. So that's how they look at it. So, so you're, you're looking, better you're off. looking at a revenue number in May of fifty four million and change. Right. Yeah. Okay. The holdout for the casino is making eight point one, eight point two. Of that. That's a sh- ton of money. So yeah. you're better off than if you're gonna play a slot, go in and go out. Well um, unless you unless you unless you're playing for comps, which some people do, which is insane. Because you're actually paying for those. You're probably going to pay them double what you really should pay Absolutely. if you were to just go in there, pay for your room. You, pay, you should play to have fun. And if you win, it's a bonus. If you don't win, then that's fine, too. And if they So, so you budget your it, money. Yeah. Budget your money. Yeah. Put, a limit, go put a limit to what Tom Zappler. Go in with your, two, in with your 200 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it's going to be, and when, don't exceed that. If you're getting a comp room and you get a comp room by playing, mm-hmm. If you get a comp room and it's worth, say, four forty nine a night, put a target of four hundred dollars in your pocket. Okay, that's good. That's good okay. theory. That's good. That way, up here in your head, you're walking out with a profit of forty nine dollars. Right. right. That, <laughs> I suppose that's the way of looking at that's it. That's the way I, think, I look at I don't it. Think now, that's the way I would look I, at it. But. Bill and I, I, I tell him everything that I do. We go back and forth when I'm. At the machines. I, sometimes it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm texting you. I haven't been to the Encore for a, a wee bit during the month of June, but we did go. But you made uh, up for it we yesterday in 10 minutes? Sunday. We went in Sunday. 10 minutes. Sunday a month. Not 10 minutes. But it's all luck. There's no skill. Listen to me. I, 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 we've talked about this a zillion times. David, I need you to kick in here, all right? Because we have talked about this with this guy a zillion times. Yes. Don't you find it a little odd that... 
the money that this guy hits for in the slots is uncanny. It's uncanny. He does well. He does more he than does well. really well. He does not he, Bill? I, yes. And I still think it has to do with the fact that he's got so much steel inside him. And, and magnets. He's got all <laughs> kinds know. of crap hey, in him. I have a fake knee with that help. <laughs> You know, we had a situation, and I think you've probably been through this. Uh, I went to play Sunday afternoon, and there was some older woman playing my machine, which really frosted my butt. The machine that you like to play. The machine that I like. It's not your machine. No, but I I have... I have three You have your favorites. I only have three machines. That's all I play. So how long do you have to wait for? I like your... So I sat in a position where... She was probably maybe 15 feet away from me, so I'm hoping that she's going to leave anytime soon. Because she was there. She's camping. I mean, she's camped out. Why don't you out. give her 50 bucks to go away? <laughs> no. So the same type of machine, the old-fashioned three-reel machine, which is the only machines that I play, there was one similar to it real close to the area. So I sat there. Me, all of a sudden. Bing, 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 bing. bing. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and, but what happened was I hit for two grams. Okay, and I'm not bragging How about it. How much did it. you spend? I, I, I'd start with, I have $200 in the afternoon. But no, no, when you hit, the two, when you hit for $2,000, I, don't know. I, had a, I have a slip. Okay. I put oh, 200 okay. in the machine. Okay. If I cash out and I'm down 100 that slip says 100 Right. Gotcha. Okay. I'll go to another machine and I play. If I blow that 100 I'll do anything but play a slot machine. I get up. I leave. I'll go for an ice cream. I'll go for a walk on the harbor walk. I'll do almost anything, David, than to put another dime in that machine. After a nice dinner, I like to sit down. After a martini, I like to sit down, and I'll play with a fresh $200. But other than that, I put 200 in the machine. I keep that slip with me till it disappears or it grows. So when you, put, so, so I, you, you I, play me, the same machine then? You stick I, with the I same. I have three machines. I couldn't get on the one that I really like. Right, okay. So now... I sit in a machine that I very seldom play, okay. but it's the same type of machine. Yeah. Right. Uh, third spin, I hit for two grand. The woman that was playing it, David, was in the area, and that's the worst thing you can do. If I leave a machine, I get the I, hell away. I bolt. From I'm the I don't same way. See, I bolt. Yeah. I don't want to see somebody hit the machine <laughs> I that either. I put 150 bucks in. So this, this woman's name uh, was Kathy. She came from Haverhill, and... She come up to me. She says, oh, congratulations. I remember it because I was watching her play. Okay. She says, I've been on this machine. She says, I gave it $200. And she says, congratulations. I felt like a heel. I really <laughs> did. But she was a delight. She wasn't upset. She wasn't rude. We talked about Mayor Jim Ferrantini. We had a good time. But that can ha- it's all luck. Bill. That's why you're better off just sitting down. Play a little bit, see what happens. Bill, I'm not a gambler. I don't. Okay. I don't gamble. I don't go to casinos. So, you know, I think Mike. Mike knows that. You probably. Know but that. gambling in a casino. I don't do say, either. I say I. I, I get it. I, but a casino has a lot more to offer than just. I, I, and I understand. But casinos that. I just one form Bill. of gambling. Investments right. are gambling but too. But how, I mean, how does? My question is, how does the encore compare to the Vegas casinos? In in regards to all Vegas casinos or encore over, over, and win out. Oh. The wind, the wind casino out there. there. How does it compare to yeah. here? That's interesting. Uh, they're relatively the same. The amenities are all the same. They treat you the same way. Um, the employees are terrific. Yeah. But what I find when I was reading recently, I found the, that Encore, Boston Harbor actually outperformed both casinos I know. in Las Vegas. I read the same thing. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Actually outperformed both of those. Well, wow. they have 3,300 employees uh, in Boston. Is Johnny Cap still working there? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and as far as pay goes for the industry, that type of industry, they're really high. Now, you also got to take into consideration it's more than just the slots, it's more than just the poker, it's more than just the table. It's. It's the whole ambiance the of the whole place and the, the experience. experience. Absolutely. Bill loves to go to fine restaurants. Mike loves to go to fine mm-hmm. restaurants. Barbara, she comes along. It's not her favorite sometimes, the, like rare, because mm-hmm. she finds the menu somewhat limited for her taste. Okay. But I do. I like it. I, if I the weather too. was a little bit cooler Sunday, I would have ate outside at rare. But it was too humid. Right. So we ended up going to the Red 8. Right. For a lousy $78, I ate like a champ, <laughs> and I had a Mai Tai besides. 78 bucks. I, I would spend three <laughs> dimes that at rare. I think Asian food is relatively inexpensive anyway. 
and it, it was good. Yeah. No, it's very good. You know, uh, I know. Uh, I get a Michelin chef that cooks there at that yeah. restaurant. Are they doing something? Uh, is there an addition going on? Uh, 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 they're putting a place across the street that uh, they're not funding. Somebody else is funding. They're having to do it for them. Um, and they're going to put in like six restaurants, 2,900 uh, parking spaces, a garage and event center. Um, no slot machines, two hotels, and uh, a bunch of retail shops. So, so it'll be more of, of a, 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 yeah, like a resort, family resort, family resort type. type. Right, right. That's kind of what they're shooting for with two That's hotels and good pools idea. and so forth. So it kind of complements the casino. Are kids allowed in a casino? Uh, no. They're not. No. Okay. No, and no casinos in Massachusetts. All right. No, no. Because I remember you know, when, when I went to, uh, I don't know, we went to one of the islands and there was a St. Martin. There was a casino, and the kids were not allowed. So, yep. like, I was playing, you know, I spent 100 bucks on a slot machine, but they were standing there at the entrance watching. You know, yeah. Tom, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the restaurants, the better restaurants, like, uh, I'll, I'll pick Fratelli, for instance. Mm -hmm. You can't bring a kid into Fratelli's because you have to walk through the, the casino. casino. Right. And according to Massachusetts, that's. So, I, so I this, is, this will solve part of that problem with the addition, correct? correct? Correct. You just won't be able to go to casino. That's all. Bill, what what what's the purpose of it though? I mean, why? That's the state. I mean, they're the ones who run it. So I don't no, know. No, no. What what's around. the purpose of building another casino? It's not a casino. Uh, uh, building another hotel without the revenue of, of the slots. I I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get more people in the area to migrate over to the casino. Well, Sunday. It so was if you put them up in hotels, they point. only have six hundred and seventy-one hotel rooms, right? Yeah. You're talking Foxwoods, who has what, uh, 1,500? Yeah. And uh, actually, oh, Foxwoods yeah. has 2,800, and Mohegan has 1,500. Is that worth 2,800? Yeah. So oh, yeah. I, I just got done talking. So that's their purpose. That's what they're after. They're trying to get more people, more people in. But Jesus, Sunday, the place was hopping. Oh, there I know. That, it's, there it's weren't that busy. many machines. And it's I'm saying to busy. myself, you have another, say, 800 people, mm -hmm. maybe 500 will walk the plate of slots. I don't know, man. It gets a little bit. It's, it gets it gets hairy. I mean, they they because of COVID, they had what twenty eight hundred slot machines in there, and yep. now they're down to nineteen hundred. Wow! Because they had to reposition everything. And I don't know if you understand uh, Mass Gaming Commission and how they operate, but you that's can't, why you're here. <laughs> you can't you can't even they can't even move a slot machine from point A to point Z without the MGC looking at the layout, saying, okay, where you want to move it to? Okay, yep, yeah, we'll sign off on that. We want to be there when you do that. They can't, they can't do anything. Their it's hands amazing. are tied. People. Every single slot machine is tied into the MGC's master computer. They can monitor every slot machine yeah. at the MGC. Yeah, it's scary. In that is, that's crazy. Yeah. What game generates the most revenue? Absolutely to, uh, top of the line, uh, Lightning Links, Dragon Links, all the link machines that have I don't know progressive are. machines. Oh, they, those they're are, all they're progressive. Slots. Slot yes. machines. They're slots. Slot progressive machines. So what about a game like Blackjack? Does that generate much? Uh, uh, blackjack, uh, uh, craps. Uh, I don't know. It, what it else generates it? revenue, but it's probably a third of what you're going to get out of the slot machines. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I looked at Encore's uh, revenue since day one. I mean, what have they been open? Like yeah, 33 you post, months? You post them on your Yeah, it's uh, like 33 thing. months they've been open, and they're... Um, they're uh, take was seven hundred and thirty-three billion dollars. Uh, seven hundred and thirty-three. Yeah, one paid in one, taxes. One point six billion is what they've generated so far. No, no what they pay to the state? Oh, state uh, four hundred million. Four hundred million. Yeah. Wow. You know, Imagine uh, that. And yet, Route ninety-nine. When you leave the Encore, how is it, Bill? <laughs> How is Route 99 when you leave uh, the Encore? Yeah, it's like going up north in mud Man. season. Well, hold on. 99, that's the, that's the road that goes into Everett, correct? Right, that's right. Where Everett into Boston. That's Charlestown or whatever. The casino yeah. is. Yeah, that's, yeah, I know, I know tough, where it is. That's kind road. of a tough area. You tough know, uh, I want you to give a shout out. As you know, Tommy, I've told you about everything Encore Boston Harbor. The Facebook Bill's page. Facebook page. Why don't you tell people about uh, a little bit about it and uh, give a shout out to your administrators, okay. especially my little darling, Lori. Uh, Lori Martini. Yeah. yeah, she's my. I right, love that name. My right, Lori Martini. I know. How can you can you get a better name than that or what? This guy goes away for a month. She steps up to the plate, yeah. takes care of the whole situation. Yeah, I was in Santa Bell for a month. I I didn't want to come back, <laughs> but that's another. It wasn't story. that hot that time of year. No, it was beautiful. Right on the Gulf. Santa Bell's gorgeous. Yeah, we were right we on the Gulf. Santa Bell, right? Santa Bell I have been. beautiful. Yeah, I know, gorgeous. but he was there like. 
We were there a month. <sighs> yeah, I know, but you were there in May. Uh, May. Yeah. To me, I, you know, I want to get the hell out of Florida. Yeah. So anyway, going back to the Everything Encore group, uh, Laurie obviously takes care of everything when I'm not there. And she takes care of a lot of stuff even when I'm here. So, I mean, I look at what she does. I can see her activity. She can see my activity. We have Michelle Long from Baltimore, who's in another group She's doing me. much. But I want to give a shout-out to her. Laurie, uh, Michelle went through quite a bit. Yeah, chemo, she's starting cancer. To feel, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. starting to feel better. And uh, matter of fact, my Everything Encore shirt, mm-hmm. I get through her. Yeah, she's, she's our person that supplies us with all that stuff. That's cool. And That's then, cool. And then you get Joseph Fantetti, who's out of Canada. I don't know um, him. Yeah, he, he's in Canada, but he, he handles some of the group stuff, cool. too. He's in well, Toronto. Uh, the the, the s- souvenir uh, coins. Oh, what I brought you today, yes. Thank you. Um, actually, I only had two Tell of them. Tell people so. a little bit about I only had two of them, so I don't know which color you want, red or black. Uh, you have to go with red. All right, Are they good luck or something? That. Yeah, everybody says they're good luck. And I, I hand them out. Uh, these were our uh, anniversary chips, I believe, yeah, or New it, Year's chip. Thank you. Uh, anniversary. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, they were anniversary. We had them on President's Day. We had, I had them And done. then you had the wristbands, the colored yeah, wristbands. Yeah, I don't have those with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is what he does on his own. All right, listen, uh, Bill Durazio's in the house. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to switch gears a little bit, talk about okay. you growing up okay. in an Italian, Italian neighborhood, sure. Italian family. Sure. And maybe some collectible stuff. <laughs> I want to know. I don't want to know what you want to know. But go ahead. That hurts. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Ciao. This is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple, fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. 
Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Pelham Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy. And Mike Kunzla. Owners of Grazzi Italian Restaurant in Drake, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazzi Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazzi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. And we're back. Okay, we are back with Bill Dorazio. Bill, uh, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Tuxbury. Real Italian uh, area, huh? Yeah, my, my mother <laughs> is... Like uh, the old uh, Little Italy? Yeah. yeah my, my, what, my, three houses? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, near the airport. You remember the Tumac Airport? <laughs> we were right next door to there. Were you really? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. off of Livingston Street. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, my, my mother's from uh, Medford. My oh, there you go. My father's from Malden. Okay, so you're, you're oh, full, right. you're, they were both Italian? Yes. Oh, yes, wow. Yes. Medford and Malden, that, all right, you get, you get a pass. You get a pass on that one. Inoletto and Dorazio. I oh, guess you, right. you know, you're going to Where were your grandparents uh, familiar? Where were they um, located? They you know? were in uh, Gaeta, Italy, over there. You know, know that, that is. is. What Small is it? little town, Gaeta, Gaeta, uh, something like that. Is this in the mainland or in Sicily? Yeah, in the mainland. In the mainland, yeah. Yeah, they were in town. So Anna Loro and in Aletto and, uh, and Durazio. And Durazio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, it, that's, it, a, that's a winning call. It was a lot of fun in uh, Thanksgiving because they were rivals, right? Medford and Malden. Oh, jeez. So yeah. we could on, and my mother would be on one side of the field, my father on the other side of the field. It was, you know. Now, did you go to, which you go to, Tuxbury High or Malden High? I went to Tuxbury High. Tuxbury High. Yeah, I've, I've been in Tuxbury my whole life growing up. I went to Tuxbury High School. Uh, Tuxbury High. They, yeah, they used to have some pretty good basketball teams. Yeah, yeah. and football. Yeah, football too. The, I can't the Wilmington the was their rival. Yeah, I fo- yeah. Uh, Mike Esposito. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, Esposito yeah. was a great sure. running. Yeah, guy. that was when I went to school. That Did you uh, play ball? No, no. There was another. Uh, who was the the co- there was a, the football coach was like legendary. Uh, I think I can't yeah, remember his Bob name. Bob Allwood, maybe. I don't know, but uh, yeah, Mike Esposito was. Uh, yeah, he was he, quite the player. And he went on to a Made pretty decent, pretty decent uh, career in, yep. in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And he became. All yeah. right, so I'm going to throw some questions out at to both you guys relative to the food at the Encore, because quite honestly, I've heard mostly good things. A couple of iffy things. I want to get your opinion. Sure. Fratelli, Bill. Okay. Um, Fratelli's, my favorite, by uh, hands down, eggplant palm. You know, they had it. It's, like, phenomenal there. Um, you can get a steak anywhere. I get a steak when I go there, but I'd rather have that. Uh, what else have I had there? The, oh, the uh, lobster. So you, you rate that four-star hands down? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mikey, yeah. when you've had the lobster, do you get the fried Diablo? No, because I don't like anything too spicy. I oh, get it don't? the other way. No, I would have thought you would have no. been a hot hey, spicy. Hey, hey. I'm asking the question. I like a little spicy, not a lot. Fratelli. My first two visits left a lot to be desired. Truthfully. Uh, I don't, don't care for the room too much because it's long and skinny. Okay. To try and have a conversation with a group of people, with a group of people. That's a good it's point. It's difficult. Very good point. It's difficult if you're there drink. Prime Plus it's time. noisy. That's what. 
That's what I just said. Okay, but I Why thought don't you, you pay attention no, to I thought dark. you said all the layout also. No, the room is, it's, 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 it's like narrow. a car. It's a car. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so it, get, it doesn't lead to a relaxed. I want to kick back. I want to sit back. I want to have my martini. It's actually the width of this room. Oh, really? Mike. It, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you have. But not the, with a bar. But no. do you like the well, food? Has the food gotten better? Like I said, I had a case of Aja the, the first couple of visits. I've gone back since, mm-hmm. and I've bragged about it on this show. The food is quite good. They have uh, a rush hour special. Right. It was $49. I don't know if it, it still is. isn't. It is. Yeah. Let me tell you, you cannot go wrong. All right. So, I'm gonna, so that's a plus. All right. What about rare? Uh, rare? <laughs> I don't know where else you, what else you can say about rare. I mean, it's one of the best steakhouses in the area. 100% oh, agree. Really? Yeah. See, oh, I, I yeah, thought, absolutely. And the best part about it, yeah. T, if the weather is good, folks, make a reservation to eat outside. Absolutely. Uh, it's just, uh, steak, to me, I think eating Steaks, out, chops, lamb. Seafood. Seafood. Lamb. Everything. Yeah. I mean, they, they have, uh, Wednesdays cocktails. they have oh. lobster special. Now, do you eat there yeah. much, Mikey? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. That's one of, that's one of my... Favorite. Like I said, Barbara sometimes, her, what they offer on the menu, it's not in her wheelhouse. wheelhouse yeah. But because but, she's not a big meat eater. Right. Unlike this guy. But she can get, they have fish. They have no fish? Yeah, they, yeah, they have fish. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 All right, Red 8. Uh, red 8, I've never eaten that. Mike can speak to Red 8. Mikey, I what is never. Red 8? Is it a hamburger joint? What is it? Uh, red 8? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Tom Borello's. <laughs> Tom Borello. Uh, the Red 8 is. Uh, a very, their price targets are outstanding. Uh, their food is outstanding. Oh. The service is outstanding. Jean, our favorite waiter, I ask for her all the time. What kind of food? What kind of fare? Chinese. Chinese, oh, I didn't Cantonese, know that. Cantonese. Chinese, red eight. That could be communist. We, red eight. We should give a big shout out, though, to the person who runs all these restaurant facilities. We've had him on with Joseph, well, yeah. Joseph Lieber. Yeah, we've had Joe okay. on. What a should, nice, nice, He's nice. done a hell of a job there. I mean, that he, guy is he phenomenal. He manages it. As a matter of fact, they have their meetings at the Red Eight a lot mm-hmm. when they get everybody right, together. Right, that's what he likes to So it's high-end high end Chinese? High end. Yes. And, yeah. and he, the only thing I didn't like Sunday, I wanted to get wonton soup. I wanted to have a soup. I yeah. felt like it. They didn't have it? On Sundays, they don't serve soup. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. All right. I, 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 it felt like... Uh, but they nah, have a Michelin we... five-star chef there. So. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. All right. Mystique. Mystique. Um, another, it's like, it's fusion, American... Japanese style. Food. I've never been. All right, so it's it's good. Okay, on deck. Uh, on deck is like just a burger bar. I mean, it's right. just, see, Mike gives know, the thumbs down there. You know, yeah, it's it's okay. You know, it's casual. Uh, if, if you, you want to go, it, there's a million screens to watch TV. So and, it's like a sports bar. Yeah, it's a sports bar. Mediocre yeah. burgers, Mikey. Uh, Mike's a burger guy. I like the burger there. I know this is where you and I had the suspicion. Yeah, I like the burger. You're not crazy about it. What didn't you like about it? I didn't like it. I didn't like anything about it. I I, I disliked <laughs> everything. Well, I, I was not happy. All right. All I right. wasn't comfortable. I, I, for our I viewers was, and listeners, listen to both of these guys because they've eaten in most of the restaurants. And the recommendations that, you know, they make, put it in your little file. I went with my godson, Derek, and uh, he was high on it. He mm-hmm. seemed to really like it. Yeah. It's Sorry, not, Mike. It right. did nothing. Cheese, meat, wine. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm talking to him. Yeah, one of the best... Uh, <laughs> One of the What'd best. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast? If you don't want something like too heavy, you just want to eat light, that's the place you want to go. Yep. Apps, uh, burger, uh, not burgers, um, uh, small sandwiches, Italian Mikey? sandwiches. I, I agree 100%. Uh-huh. I just wish the hours were slightly different a little bit because. That's a negative. That's. Yeah, the, they don't have enough. We got to talk to Joe about that. Yeah, they need to have better hours. I, I think, and they really don't promote it. And by the A way, lot of people are, don't are even these, know. Are these, are these restaurants. All near each other? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, the whole casino, it, everything's based. Casino is its core. Then the, the restaurants, then uh, peripheral. And okay. Keep, and keep in mind, all these restaurants are not owned by Encore. No. Oh, really? So, yes. Okay. So Mystique is leased. Okay. That's gotcha. not owned by... Fratelli's is leased. Interesting. And the other Who owns Fratelli's? Um, does, does Frank and Nick, Nick, Nicky, Nicky, Verano. Nicky Verano, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and Frank Pasquale. Uh, Frank yeah. Frank yeah. Pasquale. I and they also opened up... Uh, okay. Go buy your list. Okay. Uh... Night shift brewing kitchen and tap. Fantastic, <clears throat> fantastic. It's another. Uh, uh, it's bar. a beer, Yeah, it's another bar. Brewery pub where they pub. brew their own beer, and it's night shift beer, obviously. That burgers, they have on ribs. Tap. Yeah, uh, steak You've never tips. Eaten there? Uh, they have. Uh, there's a, pla- a 
something called the Harbor Walk. It's a six-acre park. For those of you who have not been to the Encore, it's really very nice, especially to go out there at night, walk along the water. It, it, it's, there's something about it's it that's very nice. Now, beautiful. they just opened up. They have a beer garden that they set up out in the gardens. And I'm not a beer. I've never had a beer in my life. I'm 77 years old, as you know. Yep. I've never had a beer. Uh, it does nothing to me. But if I did, boy, that would be the place I'd be yeah, hanging, let they, me tell you. They have good beer. Night Shift has really good beer. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What else do you have? Garden about? Cafe. Uh, Garden fe- Cafe, you got to have breakfast there. Some days it's good. Some days it's not so good. It depends on who's cooking it, obviously. And, like you, and you like it, obviously. I have never, yeah. never, never yeah. been disappointed. Yeah. I've for been breakfast. there a lot. <laughs> for breakfast. It's a breakfast. I have never had lunch there. Uh, but for breakfast, you want a nice way to start the day? Man, you call up, you make reservations, and get a reservation out in the balcony so you can sit there and watch all the action going on you. in the lobby. Go- yeah, yeah, it's great. You the know, good, it's the funny. Good, the good thing is they give you a little uh, pastry basket to eat from. Oh, nice! Uh, that's part of the meal. You know, I always wondered because I thought I always thought that a, 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 a local because you said they lease. Correct. <clears throat> The they New Bridge it. Cafe would have been a home run there. Yeah. Have you ever been to the New Bridge? No, because my uncle is Dom Dom Sausage, so I. Oh, um, oh geez. You know, is um, he uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, the New Bridge uncle. steak tips are yeah. killer. Uh, yeah, I heard right. that. What about um, in? No, I was going to say, what about in room dining? <laughs> they have it in room dining. Okay, Frank and Nick's. That's yeah. Frankie. Is that's it? the pizza joint? Okay, so it's, it's Frankie it's and in Frank. The sports they bar. opened up a Nick casual. Any good? It's, it's in a sports good? bar. Pizza's good. Yeah. Pizza wings. It's a lot better now salads. than it was when it first opened. All right. And then there's a couple of bars and lounges. Uh, you know, uh, I and you got the chicken the uh, chicken place. I don't, there's no chicken place here. What do you got next door? What's that place next to uh, where the pizza is? <coughs> oh. Um, Shake the, and Shack? Yeah. yeah. Sh- Shake Shack. Shake yeah. Shack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh. Their sandwiches are outstanding. Okay. Oh, what about, yeah, what about places like uh, Harbor Lounge, Mystique Lounge? Are those just bars? That yeah. Haba Lounge is fantastic. If you just want to sit and have, like, appetizers, which they get from uh, Cheese Meats Wine, that's Mm -hmm. what they get them from, Mm -hmm. and just sit at the bar and have a few drinks and get up and do some dancing and stuff like that. So so basically they have You got something for everything. Everything. You know, the biggest knock with Encore when it first opened was their price. Everybody thought uh, it was extremely expensive. And And it was. It was. It was. It was. And they went, and now you can get a slice of pizza if you want. If that's what you desire, you can get a slice of pizza. Till I think uh, it's 2 a.m. too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, when they first opened Sinatra's, oh. now, to me. Wait a minute. That's not there anymore? No. no. They put a Harbor Lounge in its place. And I'm, I'm like, Mike, I really like Sinatra a lot. I, Why did they get rid of it? Well, COVID I, had a lot to do with it. And I think it's an expensive room to operate. I think I'm not sure. I don't know what the logic was, but you want my feeling? This is my feeling. My feeling is Fratelli's, owned by Frank and Nick, is Italian. They had an, their own Italian restaurant. Do you see a little bit of conflict there? Maybe I mean, taking some business Frankie away from Di Fratelli's. Frankie and Nicky. I mean, they're all over the place. They have a lot of influence. They are all. Um, they got I don't know for a fact that that was a factor, but in my mind, to me, that was a. They factor. have. They own like five restaurants yeah. now. They're not then. Right. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Plus Strager and uh, yeah. what and moving there, yeah. yeah. Plus at the hotel, the, yeah. and does Strager it, Prime. Isn't there yep. a Strager at the uh, at Seaport? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right? Strager there now yeah, too. Man, yeah. They're all over the place. Um, yeah. But to get back to Sinatra's, Tom, when it first <coughs> opened, yeah. Cousin Ray Ray De Fury went uh, with Kay and then a couple of other couples. He, he went crazy. He loved it. I went with Barbara a couple of times. Oh, I had an awesome buco. Me, let me tell you. I don't know how that waiter, David, could walk with that dish <laughs> without the meat falling completely it's off amazing. the bone. He placed it in front of us, and I'm looking. I haven't touched it. I haven't touched it. I'm looking at it, and the meat just peeled off the bone. Even the chicken palm was like this big. It was really good. I miss it. I really like well, Sinatra a lot. You know, I got used to Sinatra's in Vegas, so right. I, okay. I, I was so excited when they opened up here. Bill, how often do you go? Well, when they first opened, I started going every week, and uh, now I haven't been for uh, probably six weeks. Yeah, six, seven weeks. Really? I like to go once a month, and I'll tell you why. Going back to what we originally talked about when you said you want to go in and you want to spend $100, yeah. right, or whatever the case yeah. may be, and get out of there. Right? Yeah. Okay. So when people go weekly, like some of them do, 
what they do is if I'll go and I'll, I'll say take $2,000 with me and I'll play for five, six, seven hours or whatever, right? The, those people that go there daily will probably take the same amount of money, but they'll spread it over so many days. So their theoretical loss is going to be a lot less than what my end would oh, be because wow. I'm playing for a long time. So when they get comped, they don't get the comps that someone like I would get because of the way I'm playing. Gotcha. I'm play- so they're looking at me and saying, okay, he, this guy plays one day a month. He's playing for like eight hours at a time and he's playing at safe say five dollars a spin is probably what I average, right? They can tell what my theoretical is gonna be. When you got a guy that's going in, a woman or man or whatever goes every in day there, and spending every day and spending like maybe two, three, four, five hundred bucks over a course of about five days and is playing like fifty cents a spin, a dollar a spin or whatever, right? So their their theo is gonna be a lot less. It's amazing. It's absolutely So they don't amazing. get comped. David and Chrissy. You know, again, I'm not a gambler, but it's amazing h- how they have every single mathematical. <laughs> oh, uh, they've uh, got uh, it down to a science. Trust statistic. me. Statistic, yeah. I mean, yeah. covered. So, yeah. Bill, I have a question. Or Mike, yeah. sure. um, when they comp you, do they come up to you and comp you? Do you get an email? No, how you does get that it work? through. You get it through email. Oh, okay. And you get it through your account. You have an online account with them. Yes. And it shows you what you have. And another thing they've done recently <laughs> too, which is kind of nice, is that it. Bad thing about Encore is that their comps expire after six months. So uh-huh. if you don't use them within six-month period from the day they were earned, they start to expire. Mm-hmm. So right. recently, they never told anybody before when your comps are going to expire. So recently, they started <laughs> that. So I just got an email last week saying, hey, if you don't come by July so you're gonna use it. 12th, yeah. you're going to lose $186. I, yeah. I want to ask both of you guys a question. I, I just want to explain to you, as you're playing, you're adding to your account. So you're getting credit for each play. So say you sit at a machine for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, <coughs> yeah. okay? Or you play the machines for two hours. You're adding up points every time you play. So if you look on your machine, you have, a, you have to punch in your code number. Yeah. And it'll tell you what you have in players' points. Now, those player points, whether they be $150 or $200 or $300, if you decide to go to rare and have dinner, you can pay for it with your card. If the bill is 250 you hand them your card, you don't pay nothing. You just leave the tip. Gotcha. And that's a nice perk, too. It's a real nice perk. Plus, plus you get cash back, too, right? Yeah. For, to play. Yeah. So you, you're not only getting those comps as far as, you know, what you're able to spend on property for dining and so forth, but you're also getting back money that you can spend in the slot. So, machine. okay, uh, if someone, do they like when somebody hits it real big? Doesn't no, 50, matter to them. 100, 200,000. It's a cost of doing business. business. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. It's the cost matter of to doing them. business. No. They, you know, of course, you want to hear people yelling and screaming. Right. I'm yeah. saying, I mean, that goes a long way. When you hit a machine and it's, I believe it's 1,200 when it freezes. Correct. That machine will tally up and make all kinds of noise. And they let that machine go and go and go before somebody shows up because. Not so much at the Encore because it's relatively quieter. Sure. But at Foxwoods, my God, the machine take just about has a marching band. <laughs> You'll sit there for 20 minutes waiting for an attendant to come over and pay you. What about shoppies? Uh, I mean, can, are there people out there that can beat the system? No. I don't think so. All mm. machines are, uh, have an RNG in them, a random number generator that goes through millions of algorithms every second. So the second you decide to push that button is when that algorithm kicks in. All right. Are there people that walk into that, can see that casino that are experts that can beat the blackjack dealer? There are I, card counters. Yeah. Absolutely. There yeah. are card counters. Some casinos don't allow it, and if they catch you doing it, they're going to throw you out, and others don't care. You, you get Depends. on their, their wanted list. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, we got a couple of minutes. So I will take a break now. Yeah, we'll take a break now. When we come back, I want you guys, I want both of your opinions on what's happened to Atlantic City. Hang in there. We're going to be right okay. back. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know, Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe. Sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that'll make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites in the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all these great places and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. 
And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Debert Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Debert Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645, in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzla, owners of Grazi Italian Restaurant in Dracut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazi Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. You know, our last, uh, our last ad that just showed was Grazi Restaurant. And nobody is a bigger fan of Grazi's than this gentleman right Grazi's here. I love great. Grazi. It's great. Love oh. eating outdoors there, looking at the golf course, yeah, they're, over they're, see, seeing Lowell in the It's background. amazing how high. Yeah, they, I mean, I was surprised the first time I ate there and I sat there and I'm like, what am I looking at? And I see the whole city of Lowell there and I'm like, it's no, it's beautiful. a beautiful. You, you can see the crew on a. Yeah, on a good day, depending yeah, on what table you're in. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, absolutely boy, beautiful. No, it's food. Great. Mike, food Mike Christian, Christian <clears throat> does a nice job. He really yeah, does. Yeah. Does a really classy job. I, I have a question for Bill. Well, I want to ask the Atlantic City question. Okay, go ahead. Is that okay? Sure. You sure? <laughs> What's happening? Is that a book? What do you got there? What is this? What? Bless me, sister. A Who wrote that? A slightly irreverent look at attending Catholic grammar school by Tom Zappala. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> wow. Nice. Available. Still available. On Amazon. Still available. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, talk about Atlantic City. We're going to Atlantic City uh, with the, other, like, the crew from the other uh, show okay. and uh, for the National Sports Collectors Convention. And we were there, I don't know, three, three or four years ago for that same show. What, what happened there? What happened to Atlantic City with the casino? Was there an overabundance of casinos? Oh, definitely an overabundance of casinos there. I mean, to support the population? Yeah, and then you had Trump who got into all this hot water and had his two facilities there, and they ended up closing down. They really weren't even owned by him, to be honest with you. They were just using his name. Um, yeah, but that's basically what it was. It just got oversaturated with casinos, to be honest with you. I mean, so, I'll tell you what. You walk out of that casino area like three blocks, <laughs> man. You're taking your life in your hands. Oh, if you're going away from the boardwalk. Oh, my God. I was there for it's cheerleading competition with my granddaughter two years ago. And, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Wow. You know, they had the International Sand Sculpture uh, event. They hold it in Atlantic City. And they, people from all over the world compete in this. First prize, I think, was $75,000. Oh, Jesus. And big time. This is big wow. time. And I was there a couple of times and had an opportunity to talk to some of the people as they were working. And there was a couple from Italy, young couple in their 30s. This is how the guy makes a living. He goes around putting up, he works like seven months out of the year, goes to different countries and competes. Wow. I mean, it's completely Amazing. different. But 
what Bill was saying, you know, when Atlantic City opened up, New York didn't have any casinos. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania didn't have So they have were the only show in so town. So they were the exactly. only show in town, and it then was Fox great. Then Fox kicked in, right? Yeah. Then Mohegan kicked in, and now Massachusetts has casinos. You know, and then you got people that, you know, everything we do is common sense. I think you'll yeah. agree with that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we had a, the latest casino that opened up. Uh, was called the Revel back in the, in this, the beginning, right? Right. And it was something, they were bringing on the table 1,600 rooms when the market was already saturated and Atlantic City starting to go down. And these guys spend $4.5 billion and they're opening up 1,600 rooms. What are you, brain dead? I know, really. And then, you know, they, they filed bankruptcy and the state went after them. New Jersey said, you know, we want to keep you solvent. So for a percentage of their profits, they lent them like $240 million. They filed bankruptcy the second time. They screwed all their subcontractors. And the state of New Jersey lost $240 million or What was the more. name of it? It was, it was the, the Ravel. Now it's Ocean's Resort. Ocean, Ocean's so, so Resort. It, but it's mostly condos now. It right? is. They opened yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, Joe, our friend Joe Orlando, he made uh, we're eating at the Palm. You ever hear the yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be a pretty good steak. Yeah, they're very, yeah. Very, very, good. very good. Very good. Yeah. The Borgata in Atlantic City, in my opinion, I think it's it's a little sanctuary. It's, oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. like you're in Vegas. It's like the Encore. I, when I'm in the Encore, I think I'm in Vegas. I really am. I do, too. Same thing as soon as I walk in that door. I mean, it, I, you know, we took a – we upgraded our comp room. I get two comp rooms a month, Bill, I think. Yeah. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a much bigger – player than I. I'm, I'm, I'm a minnow compared to the whale over here. Uh, but what I did was I swapped my uh, comp room and I upticked to a suite. Now the suite is 1,350 square feet. If you go in that room with the views and that room and everything about it and you don't like, there's definitely something wrong. Something. I bring a bottle of wine, cheese and crackers. Okay, yeah, but the hold world. on a second. You, you know, and both of you guys, with all due respect, you guys are at a little different level. What advice, I'm going to ask you this first, Bill. Sure. What advice do you give the, uh, the, the girlfriend and boyfriend that, have, that are going to go down to the Encore, to just they've either never been or they're going to go a couple of times. What advice do you give them as to how much they should bring what they should play, how much they should bet. What do you guys? Think? Are they are they going to stay over or not? Stay they're going to stay over, overnight, and they're going to probably pay for the room. Okay. Out of their own pocket. Okay. The just first time that's it's their, it's their f- first anniversary, and they just want to get away for a weekend. Okay. I never tell anybody what to take for a budget for okay. gambling because everybody's camped, different. Camped, yeah. I mean, you know, if I said take five thousand, then somebody's going to look at me and say, "Oh, look at this guy; he can spend five gotcha. thousand. No, no, I you understand. know what I mean. I, so I don't do that. I mean, if if you want to go and just be a casual gam- gambler. And you're going to stay one day or something, take 200, 300, something okay. like that. Okay, all right, so. Have a good time. I'm going to go with 300 bucks in my yeah. pocket with yeah. my, my wife. It's our first anniversary. We're going to stay overnight. I know it's going to cost me, and I'm going to like, what game should I play? Should I stick with the slots? Um, either blackjack, which has the best odds, or pick slots that are, um, have the best paybacks. Like the lightning links and the dragon links and those there that have the best bonus options. Do you agree with that, yeah. Mickey? And then. Yeah. Then in his case, he plays a different type of machine. He plays the old standard three reel machines, yeah. which sometimes your bankroll lasts a, a lot longer than it will. The Absolutely, other. the other machines are more volatile. His machines are more stable. And plus, the plays. maximum uh, three bucks. play is three. Yeah, uh, right. Three dollars. Yeah. What uh, about craps? I, I never hear a lot about craps. Tony D, <sighs> our good friend, the late. Champ, I don't know much about him. He's a big craps. I, I just want to get neither. back to twenty one for a minute. You mentioned twenty one. Blackjack. Uh, blackjack. Yeah. Hey, Mike, in the gambling world, we call it blackjack. <laughs> okay, you think it's easy, huh? It is blackjack, but that's beside the you point. You think it's easy, right? Well, he called it 21. Yeah, I know. All right. It's Spanish 21, so exactly. you don't want to confuse the You look two, for right? the quietest table at night. The quietest table. You look for a table that four or five people, and you could hear a mouse drop, right? They're losing. They're losing everything. Yeah. So you go and you play Don't Pass. And you make yourself two or 300 bucks. You yeah. call it a night. You go for an ice cream, and you go up to your room. That's that's the way, uh, without creating too much, getting into it technically. Right. I'm not. I don't play the <laughs> tables, but that would be the only way. When I used to go to Vegas, I'd screw around late at night, yeah. one o'clock in the morning, and I, have you guys ever played roulette? Yes. Roulette's a, that used to be the first game I ever played at a casino. Worst odds uh, a person can have. Worst odds. Casinos love you to play roulette. Play roulette, Tommy. 
Play roulette, I'll give you a free room. Really? Yeah. Oh, Just guarantee the com- it's $2,000. The comps are playing roulette are like uh, crazy. Are crazy they, good. Are they really? Crazy good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I'm a poor loser, yeah. so... Well, yeah. can't you? Ju- I don't know anything about it, but can't you just bet red or black? Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. But the uh, okay, fifty-fifty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it. Yeah. Either that or play black. If you lose the first time, you have fifty bucks. Go to a hundred. Yeah. If you lose that, go to two hundred. Chasing it. Yeah. And then you keep chasing it. Yeah. Until, yeah. 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 I mean that, and that's what happens. Yeah. Oh, and that's what point. I want to. Bill, I have a question no, for go, Bill. Go. You live in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. You hit uh, a payout at the Encore. Yep. Do you pay Massachusetts state tax? Nope. I got screwed last year. They hit me for eight hundred and forty dollars. I would. Eight hundred and forty. You claim it back. You claim it on your taxes. Just claim it back. So. And you know what my accountant told me after I questioned him? What he says now you have to file quarterly. Really? Well, uh, obviously, you need a new accountant. <laughs> I mean, Rico uh, Genovese doesn't work anymore. He does, you should get rid of him. <laughs> What's his name? Rico Genovese. I didn't know you knew him. He's doing okay. You know, yeah, how, when did he get out? <laughs> when did he get I, out? I, you know something? I think he was released January 16th. Oh, good. Good I man. think that's when he got out. Mike's the only guy I know whose accountant does his, his books from behind the box. <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper. The only thing is I have to pay him cash. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> listen, we have about four minutes left. Yeah. Um, Tell us about the site. How can, can people join the Facebook page? Yes, uh, I recommend that people join uh, because we're also, like I told you before, we have five other groups, Everything Las Vegas, Everything Las Vegas Food, if you want to know anything about any food in Las Vegas. We have the Godfathers of Las Vegas. We have Solo Experience, which is people who want to go solo but are kind of afraid to go to Vegas. I didn't know you had that. Oh, yeah, we have all those groups. 173,000 members worldwide. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So, how, many, how many members on... On, oh, in our yours. group, it's uh, 10,600 right now. That's amazing. Yeah, we're that getting – I looked at the statistics because they give you the statistics. It's um, We're getting about 150 people a week that join. And um, participation-wise, uh, out of the 10,600, we get about 75% of the members participate. That's and high. People, That's which high. I think is very good. I mean, very and good. people yeah. don't just join the Facebook page just to commit – you have information for them. That's right. what you guys do. You right. guys disseminate okay. information, specials. Here's what's going on. So the other thing is our group gets a lot of recognition by the casino. Even though we aren't affiliated with them, yep. they know of us. So they have special events for us where they have drawings, where they gave away That's you know, actually money prizes. Perfect. They gave away uh, gift cards, $25 gift cards if anybody came. Just show you're a member of everything on Core Boston Harbor, and you got a free gift card. So they do all kinds of promotions for our group, and they do at least once a year. Fantastic. So that's we got to get you back, man. We have, we have to, that was yeah, fun. we didn't cover everything we probably I know could that. have covered. Let me, Actually, let me you're know. out. You're let, out. You're out. I want to get. I want you to get. What, I'm out. Yeah, you're out. We're going to get you on the Great American Collectibles Show. And talk yeah, to I'd you. like to do that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm into collectibles like you are, and yeah. it'd be great for you. I'd love to have that. It'd be great that opportunity. But when you go away, uh, you got a vacation coming Maybe. up. Maybe. I'll check with Bill and yeah, maybe, maybe come in and do the show. Yeah, we have to see. And, what, actually, and we can we can actually. Can I talk. tell you what the vacation like, is? We have about a minute. Let me tell you what the vacation is. The vacation is this: my beautiful daughter and her husband. They're building a brand new home, like we did. Yeah, beautiful home in Kingston. And between the time that they're closing on their old house and moving into their new house is a window of two weeks. So. I made the great suggestion. I tell you guys what, <laughs> rather than you come in with Ellen and I, so we don't all kill each other, you guys stay at our house for a week. Oh, is that how it? And came? we'll stay at your Vermont ski house. Oh, for a there week. you go. What a deal! So <laughs> you great got, deal. You got that great for deal. nothing. You got the the condo for on nothing the, on, the, on the bubble. Beautiful. Hey, you got my, more angles than the Mohawk Trail. They're getting trails. my house in the bubble. I don't want to hear that. They got the dock and everything. I'm on, I'm charging a fee to swim, but. <laughs> Why don't you buy a pontoon boat so we can all go out in the river? Why? Working on it? Maybe. <laughs> My next door neighbor. You had one, didn't you? You had a boat. I had a boat. But it was 82 years old. I it use took o- a little water. It took a little water. I use OPB, other people's boats. There you go. That's what I use. You give them the right to dock. Absolutely. We got to go. All right, Bill. Okay. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah, thank to you very much for having listeners. me. To our viewers and listeners, we Brother, love you guys. Thank you very much for having me, Michael. Uh, actually, happy 4th. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Happy, happy for it. And be uh, safe. Mikey's going to be monitoring the show on Friday. I am not going to be available. Yes, sir. All right. With that being said, remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. There you go. Have a great week. Take care. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.